we are going to discuss some of the most significant events in Bible prophecy that we have seen fulfilled. We're talking about the host given against the daily sacrifice. We're going to look at this significant speech that took place on April 30th, 2018, in which it was stated, Iran lied. Now, this was a declaration of war against Iran, triggering 2,300 days until Armageddon. Now, what is taking place, we can find in Daniel chapter 8, the daily sacrifice was taken away, and a host was given to him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression, and it cast down the truth to the ground and practiced and prospered. Okay, so a host was given unto him against the daily sacrifice. Now, what we're going to go over is something called Daniel's Timeline, which we submitted six years ago, where we would watch for these events. We stated ahead of time to watch for a trigger event that would take place on the 9th of Av, July 25th, 2015. This, in turn, would trigger Daniel's timeline. Now, we saw something happen, something very, very significant that triggered the end of days. The Baphomet statue displayed in Detroit, Michigan, precisely on this date. That statue is in the prophecy, Daniel 8, the rough satire goat. Okay, this is the he goat, this is the devil, this is the fawn that triggered 790 days from July 25th to September 22nd, 2017 of the Revelation 12 sign. It says in Daniel, Behold, I will make you known what will be in the last time of the indignation for the time appointed, the Moedim. That's a feast day. So it was Yom Kippur, September 22nd, 2017. So we had the trigger event and we also stated that Obama had to be involved. This week, Michelle Bachman actually, actually predicted that I would bring about the biblical end of days. The Kenyan people have shown incredible resolve and, and remarkable resilience. I also want to pay tribute to the sacrifices of Kenyan forces who serve in the African Union-led uh, mission against Al-Shabaab in Somalia. The Kenyan people have shown incredible resolve and, and remarkable resilience. I also want to pay tribute to the sacrifices of Kenyan forces who serve in the African Union-led uh, mission against Al-Shabaab in Somalia. And to thank so we stated Obama would do something. So in his speech when he was in Kenya, he talked about this subtle veiled reference of the sacrifices in Michigan. What were the sacrifices on Michigan when he was in Kenya in Detroit, Michigan? They displayed the satanic Baphomet goat statue, triggering Daniel's timeline perfectly on the same moment, July 25th, 2015. Okay, so that trigger event we see in Daniel 8:22, the rough satire goat was Greece, came from the West, the fawn, the devil, the goat, the hairy goat, the satire. Which then brings us to the start of the tribulation, September 22nd, 2017. Behold, I'll make you know when the tribulation starts. So, from the host trodden, we have 790 days, which brings us to the 2,520 days of the seven-year tribulation, at the end of which is Armageddon. Okay, so it's a quick summary of Daniel's timeline up to this point. And we would have 2,300 evenings and mornings. These are precise days from that time, July 25th, to a host given against the daily sacrifice. Okay? So, this is a precise prophecy of precise days. And we said to watch for something on April 30th, 2018. Okay? Now, in Jerusalem, the last sacrifice that took place of the daily sacrifice, the full daily sacrifice. We have another video to explain all that. We were there witnessing the last time it happened was Passover 2019. 
Okay? Since then, there's been no full daily sacrifice. So our trigger event led us to war being declared on Iran, 2,300 days to Armageddon. We're going to explain the significance and great prophetic significance of what took place during this speech. Tonight, we are going to reveal new and conclusive proof of the secret nuclear weapons program that Iran has been hiding for years from the international community in its secret atomic archive. We're going to show you Iran's secret nuclear files. Well, tonight I'm here to tell you one thing. Iran lied. Big time. After signing the nuclear deal in 2015, Iran intensified its efforts to hide its secret nuclear files. In 2017, Iran moved its nuclear weapons files to a highly secret location in Tehran. This is the Shorabad district in southern Tehran. This is where they kept the atomic archives, right here. We're going to break down this speech and all the attacks that took place in sites in Iran. You could see he identified nuclear sites in Iran. Now, some of those are specific locations. Some of them are specific people. But on this map, you're looking at a number of explosions that took place in Iran, many of their nuclear sites. So they threatened them back in 2018. Then in 2019, they carried out many of these uh, Mossad-led attacks. Okay, So the threat was real and the war was declared and the... Um, operations were carried out. We can see these threats in this video, and we're going to break down and show you the people, the assassinations, and the attacks. Few Iranians knew where it was, very few, and also a few Israelis. A few weeks ago, in a great intelligence achievement, Israel obtained half a ton of the material inside these vaults. And here's what we got. 55,000 pages. Another 55,000 files on 183 CDs. Everything you're about to see is an exact copy of the original Iranian material. So Iran devised a plan to do two things. First, to preserve the nuclear know-how from Project Ahmad. And second, to further develop its nuclear weapons-related capabilities. That plan came directly from Iran's top leadership. Here's another document from the archive. This is following the new directive of Iran's Minister of Defense, Mr. Shamkhani. Today is uh, the director of the National Security Council. So there you saw the Minister of Defense clearly identified and targeted. Then we saw it in January 3rd, 2020, Qasim Soleimani assassinated, okay, the revered uh, most popular figure in Iran, okay. So there you saw the Minister of Defense in the presentation, and then we see the assassination of Qasim Soleimani, January 3rd, 2020. Following the new directive of Iran's Minister of Defense, the work would be split into two parts, covert and overt. A key part of the plan was to form new organizations to continue the work. This is how Dr. Mohsen Fakhizadeh, head of Project Ahmad, put it. Remember that name, Fakhizadeh. Remember that name, Fakhizadeh. Remember that name killing of the Iranian top nuclear scientist Mohsen Fakhrizadeh, Iran has said that he was assassinated by Israeli operatives using a satellite-controlled machine gun. The Fakhrizadeh, remember, was killed on the 27th of November. The scientist was ambushed and then assassinated while he was driving on a highway just east of the capital city of Tehran. Tehran has blamed Israeli operatives for carrying out the assassination of Mohsen Fakhrizadeh. However, Israel, like it always does, so far has not commented on the allegations nor has it condemned this terror attack in Tehran. 
The incident is the second targeted killing of a very high-ranking Iranian official since the month of January, when U.S. President Donald Trump had ordered for a drone strike on Qasem Soleimani. The Minister of Defense was identified, and we saw the assassination of Qasem Soleimani, right? And then what did he say? Remember that name, okay? Mohizadeh. And we saw the top Iranian nuclear scientist as well assassinated after this presentation, April 30th, 2018. The war and combat operations taking place on Iran. So here's his directive. It's right here. And he says, the general aim is to announce the closure of Project Ahmad. But then he adds, special activities, you know what that is, special activities will be carried out under the title of scientific know-how developments. And in fact, this is exactly what Iran proceeded to do. It continued this work in a series of organizations over the years. And today, in 2010, or 2018, this work is carried out by Sapand. That's an organization inside Iran's defense ministry. And you will not be surprised to hear that Sapand is led by the same person who led Project Ahmad, Dr. Fahri Zadeh, and also, not coincidentally, many of Sapan's key personnel worked under Fahri Sadeh on Project Ahmad, Bordeaux and Uranium Enrichment Facility. This was a secret underground enrichment facility that the Iranians built under a mountain. You don't put thousands of centrifuges under a mountain to produce medical isotopes. You put them there for one reason, nuclear weapons. Enrichment for nuclear weapons. But the files show that Fordow was designed from the get-go for nuclear weapons as part of Project Ahmad. Here's an original Iranian blueprint of Fordow. And what happened was that Iran continued to build Fordow years, secretly build it, years after Project Ahmad ended. Here's what it looks like. That's the entrance. It goes under a mountain. You also will not be surprised that Iran insisted on keeping Fordow. And amazingly, the nuclear deal enabled it to do it. So this is a terrible deal. It should never have been concluded. And in a few days' time, President Trump will decide, will make his decision on what to do with the nuclear deal. I'm sure he'll do the right thing. The right thing for the United States, the right thing for Israel, and the right thing for the peace of the world. The right thing for the peace of the world. Of course, the Antichrist would grant this peace agreement with the Middle Eastern country, with the blue flag, and allow them to have the host given against the daily sacrifice to commit these wars. Okay, so that's what the Antichrist did, made the agreements with Israel to allow them to have the authorization to go with these wars. Now, let's look at the prophecy in Daniel 8. It talks about the ram which you saw having two horns are the kings of Medo Persia. Medo Persia is modern day Iran. And the rough goat you saw is the king of Greece. Okay, Greece, very significant. Actually, right now, Israel and Greece are performing joint military. Um, Maneuvers in Greece. Okay. So we have this goat and this ram. So it's this war, this Armageddon-like scene that is even taking place right now. Behold, a he-goat came from the west, from the face of the whole earth, and touched not the ground, and he had a notable horn. And he came, the goat came to the ram that had the two horns that he had seen standing by the river and ran into him with the fury of his power. And he was moved with bitterness against him and smote the ram. So the goat goes against the ram, which is exactly what you're seeing. The host is given to him against the daily sacrifice. Now, watch another speech and more threats being made. In Lebanon, in Lebanon, Iran is directing Hezbollah to build secret sites, to convert inaccurate projectiles, 
into precision-guided missiles, missiles that can target deep inside Israel within an accuracy of 10 meters. Hezbollah, listen to this, Hezbollah is deliberately using the innocent people of Beirut as human shields. They've placed three of these missile conversion sites along Beirut's international airport. Here's a picture that's worth a thousand missiles. Here's Beirut's international airport. Here's the first missile site. It's in the Uzai neighborhood on the water's edge, a few blocks away from the runway. Here's the second site. It's underneath a soccer stadium. That's the soccer stadium. Two blocks away. And here's the third site. It's adjacent to the airport itself, right next to it. So I have a message for Hezbollah today. Israel knows, Israel also knows what you're doing. Israel knows where you're doing it. And Israel will not let you get away with it. You will not get away with it. Now, after that, that was September, later that year in 2018, then we had the nuclear mushroom cloud-like explosion take place in Beirut, Lebanon, in a close proximity to where he was identifying these sites in the United Nations. It was a distance of about five miles, but again, there was the threat a few months later, after the threats to Iran, then the threats to Beirut and their enemies, and they detonated this explosion that appeared to be a nuclear-type device on innocent civilians in Beirut, Lebanon. So hopefully you're beginning to see the pieces come together of how these speeches and these threats are very real. They're very significant. They're very... Uh, powerful statements to the enemies of the Middle Eastern country with the blue flag. So there was their warning to Beirut and the sites that they presented. Obviously, they're not going to bomb the sites they present before the United Nations. So those sites are about five miles difference from the explosion site, as you can clearly see. And keep in mind, in the same speech, Netanyahu also warned Iran. This is 2018. Okay, now let's listen to him ab talk about the sites in Iran. What I'm about to say has not been shared publicly before. Today, I'm dis disclosing for the first time that Iran has another secret facility in Tehran a secret atomic warehouse for storing massive amounts of equipment and material from Iran's secret nuclear weapons program. In May, we exposed the site of Iran's secret atomic archive. It's right here in the Shorabad district of Tehran. Today, I'm revealing the site of a second facility, Iran's secret atomic warehouse. It's right here in the Turku Zabad district of Tehran, just three miles away. Let me show you exactly what the secret atomic warehouse looks like. Here it is. You see, like the Atomic Archive, it's another innocent-looking compound. Now, for those of you at home using Google Earth, this no longer secret atomic warehouse is on Meyer Alley, 
Myers Street. You have the coordinates. You can try to get there. And for those of you who try to get there, it's 100 meters from the Kalishoi, the rug cleaning operation. Now here you can see a person. Um, it's called the Iranian Students News Agency. But basically, a civilian went to the site mentioned. Uh, this is the alley in the district of Tehran that Prime Minister mentioned during his speech at the UN General Assembly in September 27th. That was 2018. And so they decided to go there and look at the site and take photographs. So here you can see the photograph here that of the uh, entrance that Netanyahu posted. Okay, that's what the gate looks like. That's what it looks like from the street. Okay, so that's, this is the, the street area. And then if you look inside, you can see it's, it's abandoned. Okay, there's nothing inside. It's, uh, you know, there's, there's nothing here. Okay, it's a, it's a fraudulent claim to say that this is some kind of warehouse uh, storage facility or whatever he said. So we can clearly see they're making a point of uh, certain places, but they're not authentic sites. But the threat is real. So hopefully you're seeing within these speeches the critical nature of the threats to these enemies, okay? When they say peace and safety, then comes sudden destruction. Hopefully you're beginning to see that the agreement between these two nations, the two flags you see there, the Antichrist has granted this authorization, okay, to the Middle Eastern country with the blue flag to go to war against Iran, OK, so it, it, this is the host being given. Hopefully you're beginning to see the significance of this speech of the host being given against the daily sacrifice. OK, now you may say, well, what? Where's the daily sacrifice? The animals have been sacrificed. Full sacrifices have been performed. For a few years. OK, we've witnessed some of those. We've showed you the last time it's happened. Full sacrifice, the full details of the sacrifice. We have another video where we'll explain that to you. Okay, but the full sacrifice, last one, Passover in 2019. Okay, then they did the Mount of Olives one for the 70 nations. That's not a full sacrifice. That doesn't count. Okay, so that's 2019. Then you get 2020 and you have the virus. There was no sacrifice. OK, then you have 2021 in Passover and they did not sacrifice. So Iran lied, triggering 2,300 days to Armageddon. Yet Armageddon, OK, is happening right now. Being triggered by the nation, Middle Eastern nation with the blue flag. So hopefully you're beginning to see and understand the significance of the host being given. What took place on April 30th in that speech and the war against Iran. Now we have a whole playlist on Daniel's timeline to tell you all these details. In this video, we are only focusing on everything that has happened in this speech so that you know and you understand the significance of what's taking place in prophecy. Who is saying this? So guys, we have links in the description field for Daniel's timeline. Please watch this. Please educate yourself. Nobody understands what I'm saying, guys. Thank you. God bless you. Goodbye.